I'm good. How are you doing? Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. Yeah, no, fair enough. There's nothing well, wrong with I being a bit excited. Friend, in the, in the, it's ridiculously exciting because I actually had a friend of mine out with me today in the bush and she heard the yip. We heard it. We heard the yip going. Excellent. You didn't get a so recording of that by any yeah. chance. No, it was off the cuff because it's been a weekend. There were people on their, their bikes and stuff and I could hear dogs out in the distance. Okay. So I'm fairly certain that they're actually comfortable with me, but it was because there was somebody else. I had another person with me that they didn't know. Ah. I swear that's exactly what I was picking up on. Oh, that's good. It was weird. It was so weird and she fully agrees with me too. Yeah. Follow your gut so instinct tough. with this stuff. Oh, yeah. A big time. And I needed to ask you a question. Yeah. When it comes to the... Do you know anything about their dens at all? I know a little bit about them. Um, they like to put a bit of nesting material in there from time to time. So Holy that... crap balls. Yeah, they do. They cover that up like there is nobody's business. But it's very, very on purpose. You can tell when that's... That's not a wombat or a snake or a fox or anything else. It, it's covered and it's very strategic. That's exactly what we were seeing today. Okay. So, look, let's let's get down to brass tacks. Let's go through what happened yesterday when you had your sighting, all right? Oh, by the way, happy, happy birthday for today. Oh, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. I do feel like yesterday was a bit of a gift just from the universe, just quietly. <laughs> my absolute passion in life so i thought it was a bit of a thank you or a gift from the universe absolutely what happened yesterday i'm standing at the back of my place up in my barbecue area which is fenced off because i've got goats in my little backyard area then i've got another paddock in between my place and the dairy farm behind me right yep so i'm sitting there talking on the phone blah, 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 and i'm not a huge phone talker <laughs> you wouldn't think that right now but I'm really not, so I was just kind of like just sitting there listening to this person just talking and looking off out into the paddocks, and then someone just caught my eye, because there are no dogs, like we're in, uh, that's, a, that's a working cattle farm, so I know the dogs that they've got there, and out of nowhere, this weird, red-looking, weird, wheaten-looking thing, because I've had ridgebacks before, I was like, red wheaten, comes like just out of one of the paddocks and just comes like weird side bounding up the laneway like the weirdest gait I've ever seen in my life I'm like that's not a dog that's not a dog that's not a dog that's not a dog got off the phone got the camera out bang and that's when I took and as soon as I put, like, got off the phone something in my head just went tiger and I just got the ass end of it yeah I'm telling you now, that tail doesn't move they are as straight as an arrow and they move so weird I've never seen anything like it in my life. And then bang, it was gone. So how how long a time frame were you looking at it, roughly? Good 30 seconds. 30 like, seconds? 30 seconds. So it was sort of coming towards seconds. you off on an angle, was it? It was coming towards me. And no, 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 if you, I'll send you a screenshot of my property and where I was standing and the laneway it was running down. Um... And, and you will understand what I'm talking about, but I fully saw it come out of that paddock because they've got something growing in that paddock because there's too much water, no cattle can go in there. Yep. There's something growing in there. They've got something sewn in there at the moment, so it's shot out of there, come up the laneway towards my place, and then shot back out into the bush again. Okay. And I swear it was a good 30 seconds because I was on the phone going, I've got to go, I've got to go, I've got to go, I've got to go. Hung up. I was hung up on the mate, and then pulled the camera out straight away, and that's when I got the photo. So it was a good 30 seconds. Exactly what were you looking at when you were looking at this animal? So you've described it had a peculiar gait. What else? It was a reddy colour. What else struck you? Red colour, very small, very skinny. The tail was nothing I've ever seen. Now, we've got a fox that lives up the top of our property. Now, I am in the state forest, so I do understand, like, big foxes, small foxes, maybe foxes, the whole lot. Yep. This was not a fox. That tail and that the way that it moved with its spine, the way the tail sat with the spine... That was not a cat. That was not a dog. That was not a fox. That was nothing I've ever seen before, uh, ever. And, I, and I'm actually, I, I've been to, been working with animals my whole entire life. Like, that's, that's nothing I've ever seen before in my life. I've okay. seen the black cats out in London and several. I've seen 
all sorts of crazy stuff. I've never seen something move like that before in my life. Like I... something else. Okay. The back legs move together like a hop, but the front legs move like a dog. It's yeah, weird. so it's, it's almost running like yeah. a rabbit does to a degree. Yeah, but way more... Pe- yeah, peculiar. Way more. Yeah, it's so hard. Um, so hard to explain. Did you notice... So did you notice any stripes on it or any other distinguishable no, things about it? it was very small. I'd say it was small. It is. It was bigger than the, the female fox that we have living at the top of the hill. Okay. Um, so it's not, it was way bigger than the fox, but it was smaller than my dog. And I've got a bulldog crossed. Okay. It was smaller than that, but bigger than the fox. Okay. It was very, very skinny. And then, like I said to you yesterday, as soon as I saw it, took the photos, spoke to a friend, <laughs> spoke to about this to a friend of mine for a good hour and a half. My phone let the dogs out, bang. Then two seconds, he pulled back an antler, and then he pulled back another one this morning. And then I found another one, and then I found the jaw. Okay. And that jaw, that bite, that is something else. There is nothing that can break a jaw like that. I've got a pit bull, and the pit bull doesn't do that. Yeah, that was a piece of um, deer jawbone, you reckon, that you sent me the photo of? Correct. Okay. 100% it is. Now, the, yep. s- the small antlers, that's probably from juvenile yep. bucks that might be dropping their juvenile Correct. antlers, so that's not no. necessarily indication that they're... No, 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 because he's bringing them back, and they've actually got flesh and stuff inside them. They're, they're from kills. They're oh, okay, from they're dogs. definitely they're from, from kills. kills. All right, and fair enough. Tree- the last one that I found today because there are two marks on the end of it. Okay. Now, um, you mentioned yeah. before that you've worked with animals a long time. What exactly do you do? I have my whole entire life. I've been doing rescue for abused and neglected, uh, wild, domesticated, everything you know. My whole entire life. I'm currently studying animal management and then veterinary nursing. I've worked with Pfizer. I've worked with CSL. I've worked with Melbourne University. I've worked with Auckland University, I'm um, sorry, Auckland Veterinary Centre, um, yeah. So you're well versed. When it comes to animals. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, you're well, well versed with your animals then. Mate. How long have you lived in the area yeah. where you are there? It's East Gippsland somewhere, isn't it? Today. 12 months. 12 months today. I've and been up through that. exact coordinates of exactly where it is, and I swear I have found their den. I swear to you, I have, well, we can smell it. So you're the only person that saw it? There was no one else there at the time? You're on your own? Yeah. Um, did you see it after you took the photo or does it disappear from then onwards? It shot off into the bush straight away. Okay, so that photo that you've right, sent right me... There, where, that, where that photo is, right where its nose would be, is exactly where the bush like, properly starts. Okay, yep, I see what you mean. Sense. So we're just so looking... The fires, came through, the fires came through a couple of years ago and they actually burnt out everything. So this is all new. Yep. So, and then they had the fires again and everybody like Larry has said like a lot of wildlife has been pushed out yep. not because of the fire and this is making a lot of sense yeah <laughs> a lot of sense and also the thing that the other thing that got me going was when I actually saw it running was the length of its nose okay like, oh my god what is this some weird mangy thing from South Africa or some weird crazy country I'm like no, it's not. No, and then my head, something just popped in my head and went tiger. And that's why I've, I've got to go. I've got to go. Bang. Tried to get a photo as soon as I could. Something just told me in the bottom of my gut, in my head, something just said tiger straight away. And that yip, I've been, I've been hearing those yips for weeks. Okay. For weeks. And just today, I had somebody else there and she heard it too. She heard the yip when we were looking around the nest. Now, you, you mentioned you've seen a few prints around the place as well. Yeah, it's around my house, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I thought they were all dogs. No, they're not. <laughs> so your dog doesn't... They're different. They're not the same. They're not as heavy. Your dog s- stays in behind that wire fence that's in the foreground of your photo, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, my dogs do not leave that place without me. Yep, 100%. We're in a state forest. They cannot. And they know the rules. They don't. They don't just leave without me. Yep. 
if it's got a very long snout, it's possibly that it was a female, I suppose, because the males are known to have a that's broader right. and more stockier head. That, that's exactly what I researched last night, and that's exactly what I've just learned. Right. Yes, which would make a lot of sense as to why she's vocal if I've got somebody else that she doesn't know in that area. And that's exactly what she did today. And she started going like that, that yep, oh, I can't even do it, I can't even get my voice out to that pitch it's quite a high so pitch yep, yep that you heard yeah yep have and you she heard it she heard it i said that's it and i was waiting whoa stop i said do you hear that and she goes yeah i said that was it that is it um have <laughs> we you... had dogs out out way way out with motorbikes and stuff like barking and stuff this was not a dog this was not a dog bark yeah, yeah, it's it's, much it, closer to us. it's a higher pitch sort of yip that you'd expect it from is. a tiny little dog. Yes, yeah, hundred percent, yeah. Have you yeah, had a chance to have a look at our much. YouTube channel? No, I actually haven't because last night I was sort of got really carried away with your Facebook page, <laughs> <laughs> and then I started looking at all the videos and stuff that you had on one of the channels. But, um, yeah, I sort of wanted to try and figure out, like, what it was that I saw. So I've narrowed it down to being a female. Um, yeah, so that's kind of where I'm at. So if you want to point me in any direction and give me, give me any sort of directives of what I should do next, because I know there are a lot of hunters there, and I, I really want to look after these guys. Like, this is, this is real. If you um, go to our YouTube channel and have a look through the video playlist, um, there's quite a yeah. few videos on there. I think there's at least one on there with some samples of some sounds that I recorded in Tassie with those yips. That's what, that's what I was com comparing it to, and it's bang on. It's 100% exactly the same thing. Oh, excellent. That's exactly what I was hearing today. Yeah, yeah. That, that's exactly the noise. That's how I knew that it wasn't a dog. Ah, that's very good. Because I had my friend Jackie today going, did you hear that? And she goes, yep. And I went, that's exactly what I'm talking about. You're familiar with the yes, noise that foxes make? Yeah. I beg your pardon? Are you familiar with the noises that foxes make? Yes, absolutely. They do a yes. si similar noise, but it's a little bit more of a yap than a yip, so this to speak. This was not. This was not a fox. I 100% know this was not a fox. The fox actually lives, uh, and she's got her crew. They actually live at the top of the hill. Yep. So I'm at the, my house is at the bottom of the hill, and then... So if we're looking at the, the road from my house, so the fox lives at the top of the hill on the left of me in the bush. That's where the, the thylacines are. Okay. Have you had any unusual kills around the place? Have you seen any dead animals that look mutilated or anything like that? No, I've only had my cat and I actually heard it scream. Uh, February, I think it was February, January, February this year. Heard it scream. At about one o'clock in the morning, thought, "Oh my god, I should go out and get it," and she was gone. She and was yeah. gone. I actually thought it was the goanna that did it, but no, it wasn't. There's no way. <laughs> she was, she was only a small cat. Yeah. But yeah. How, how old was your cat? I had his chickens. She was two years old. Okay, and she just vanished after you heard her scream. It's not the first time that I've heard about um, domestic animals being taken by these things. My next son, Ayla, told me um, the year before I moved in that all of his chickens went missing. Okay. Yeah, they... Yeah, so there's a lot of food and there's also a dairy farm behind me. So they've got a lot of calves that slip at the night, at, during the night and stuff. So I'm fairly certain that that's what she was looking for. Well, often if they where they do the carving, if they leave the afterbirth around, that will br bring them in for sure. Exactly. Yeah. Because these yeah. these things exactly. like these things like the blood filled organs. And this exactly, and this this farm behind me, they they're dropping like eight calves a day. Like they're actually dropping eight calves a day. So imagine the amount of calves that they're slipping at night. Yeah, there'd be quite a bit of blood and stuff lying around if it's all done in one yeah. area. And that's where it was coming from. So it's like it knew how far it could go onto that property and then come back. Well, that's you interesting. I mean? Yeah, I get what you mean, yeah. What, when, I send you, when I send you the map, you'll understand. When I send you the, the Google Earth, yep. and I'll show you the, the points and stuff. you go, oh, I get ya. Yeah. So it's, it is hanging around the bush, but it does shoot out because of that farm. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. And we'll, we, 
it's I haven't seen any wild dogs. I haven't seen anything else. I haven't seen a damn thing. Okay. And I'm there all of the time. Do you all um the time. I see everything. Do you own any trail cameras by any chance? Well, that's what I'm actually gonna get this week, to be honest. So we, today when we went and we found what looked to be like a serious underground city for some kind of animal. Yep. It's definitely not a wombat or anything else. I was like, yeah, well, I'm going to go get some trail cams this week and we're going to go set them up. Especially where I sent you those those den photos where there's that weird poop at the front. Yep. The grey poop. Yep. Because we found white on the sides. We found white on the sides on the inside of those dens. We just didn't want to go too far in, so we didn't put our smell in it. Excellent, good move. That was that was that was what I was yeah, going to no, mention to you. So when we heard the yip, I was like the yips yip yips. I was like, yeah, that's for us to go. Like they don't know you. So I was listening to my mate Jackie. I'm like, they don't know you, but they're telling us to go. Yep. So we need to go now. How yeah. far from your place is it to those lair sites? Um, like a six second walk. Oh, really? It's that close to your home? In the forest yeah, there? Yeah, that close. Literally that close. Yeah, it's right there. Right mm, there. Very interesting. Yeah. We want these guys to thrive and, and do their thing, you know? But they're not extinct. No, they're not they're extinct. 100%. They're not extinct. And no, Gipp- no, Gippsland no, no. has hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of sightings all the way around Gippsland yeah. from... Grantville down to Wilson's Promontory and all the way up to the Dandenongs and back across. There's, yep. There really is hundreds of sightings. Five minutes ago, when I found out about the Wontaggy Monster, which is kind of weird how you posted it like, a couple of days ago, that's exactly what actually got me on this because I was looking into some other weird down the rabbit hole stuff and I stumbled across this Wontaggy Monster. And I was like, what are they talking about, this Wontaggy Monster? Like, that's, a, that's a tiger. That's a tiger. Got more a bit involved. Went, it, it, that's a tiger. Found a person that knew a person who actually did see the sighting in 2013 down Old Road. That is a legit story, 100% full blown legit story. Yep. So that's why I was like, oh, I'm gonna find me a tazzy tiger. Didn't realise five years later you'd see one. <laughs> there you go. Stranger things have happened. <laughs> so that's yeah. Oh well, that's awesome. It sounds like it's um, done. If it's done anything, it's lifted your spirits and um, given you a good way to celebrate your birthday. Oh, definitely. I thought it was the biggest gift ever. But yeah, I'll get you some more evidence and I'll get you some footage and stuff. And I'll yeah try and put some cameras up in some good spots and get you some serious footage. No worries. But, the, but there's nothing that will smash a jawbone like that and leave imprints like you can see the bite marks, dude. You can see the top mandible bite marks and you can see the, the bottom mandible. You, you can see it all. It's right there and it's fractured that jaw all the way through it. What the hell can do that in Australia? But look, there's a lot of strange things that people see, Candy. You know, like there's big black yeah. cats, there's spotted cats, there's see striped it? cats. There's all sorts see of weird it? things, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, no, you... I've seen all that. I've seen all that out wandering out several. I've seen all of those cat stuff. This was not a cat man. Yep. This wasn't, it wasn't a dog, it wasn't a cat, it wasn't a roo, it wasn't a wallaby, it wasn't, it wasn't anything I've ever seen in my life, ever. Well, what it was, was a, was a rare animal, that's for sure, but it's good that um, you've had a sighting only yesterday, that's amazing, that's really good. The other most recent sighting we had was at Royal National Park, south of Sydney, about two or three weeks ago. Yeah, so they're right across the mainland. The sightings you get them from every state. Some more, they're some areas more often than not. They've been pushed out because of all the fires. Yeah, yeah and they, they, I think the numbers are actually increasing. So they're just being seen that little bit more often. So that's yeah, a good thing. Yeah, people aren't out there hunting lot for them. Exactly. Oh, I think not. Look, I've had at least three or four hunters that have been out hunting, doing their thing, and thought they had a fox in the sights, realised what it was, and not pulled the trigger. So, you know, there's plenty of good hunters out there. I have to think that maybe this is why they've set the den up right next to my house, is because I won't let any hunters shoot near my property. I won't. I'll go out there and I'll go off my nuts. Because I've got horses, I've got goats, I've got everything. You just don't shoot around my property. 
period. I'm yeah. wanting to leave it where I'm safe for it. You just don't shoot around my property without me knowing. Yeah. So I go off my head. So nobody really, and they used to, they used to come down and shoot right there in that bush bed all the time, and they haven't been. Yeah. Things have settled down a little bit. In my mind. <laughs> yeah. So it's like they're safe. Oh, that's awesome. All right. Well, look, um, Stay in touch. Keep me posted if something else happens, and and keep your uh, camera handy, or your if you've got a camera separate to I'm a phone. Send, uh, because of the course that I'm doing, I'm in touch with a lot of vets. They're all my teachers and all that sort of stuff. So I'm actually going to get that jaw swabbed and see if we can pull any other DNA off it. Oh, you you won't get any DNA off of that once it's been out in the weather for a while. I guarantee you there won't be any other oh, DNA yeah. on it. I've had. It's a clean. It's a, it's a I've really had. I've had very. I've had very, very <laughs> fresh, very fresh kangaroos with their heads completely ripped off by what I thought was a thylacine, and we swabbed it and we actually froze the head and took the the the, the whole connection bit with us and oh. never got anything but kangaroo DNA. Um, are you sending it? Who are you sending your swabs to though? Oh, that was a place in South Australia. The, the epidermal DNA is very hard to um, preserve. It breaks down really quick. Saliva okay. stuff, yeah. Okay. But, you know, if you find a fresh yeah, scat, that's, that's a very different kettle of fish. If, so yeah. if you find a real juicy, wet, fresh one that's a very pale grey, it almost looks It almost looks like a... Um, Australian animal. Like, I'm in the bushman. I can tell you what poop is whose, right? This grey stuff that I'm seeing is not anything that eats plants. I can tell you that right yeah, now. Yeah, it'd be a carnivore for sure. There's nothing else out there that's a carnivore. <laughs> it's not. Even the fox eats plants. Well, see the if you can bag some of it up. It take take some sandwich bags with you and see if you can bag it up and send us a couple of photos I'll of it and we'll have a look. And if you can put a tape measure put a tape measure next to it so we can see the size of it as well okay did, did they put poop at the front of their dens or um a lot of like quolls will do that so will devils they'll they'll poop near their den um i'm not absolutely certain whether a thylacine does or doesn't I've, I've, the, the poops that i've found are generally out in the tr on the track not so much near a lair but I wouldn't say never. Yeah, but um, I'm, I'm, but me and we're pretty certain that we've found something like uh, there, there are holes everywhere. There are big holes, little holes, and it's like we can actually sit there and we can join it all up under the ground. Like we can actually line it all up, and we go, "This is not a wombat, dude. This isn't a fox. This isn't. This isn't normal. This is really smart, and this is really sophisticated." They they it's often very hidden. they're, they're all known very hidden too. They're known to, known to have at least one or two entrances to their lairs so they can get in and get out if something's yeah. coming. So These holes are different. They've got that grey poop at the front. Bag some of it up and um, take a couple of photos and send them through and I'll have a look at it for you. Quiet yeah. observation will be will be the way, you know. You, if you're just sitting around watching and listening, that, that might prove to be quite effective. Great oh, talking yeah, to you, Candy. Yeah, oh, good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Nice to talk to you and um, stay in touch. I'll speak to you again soon. Wow, wasn't that awesome? So here's her photo right here. Now, it's easy to get um, lost in a bit of pareidolia here. So here's the tail of the animal here. So the base of the tail is about there and then it's running up here on this angle. Now this large box wire is in the foreground and just by looking at the photo when it's not enlarged I would say that that foreground wire is a good 10 to 15 meters away from the actual fence where the animals running through so it's come from this direction over to the left it's heading to the right at first I thought that was its face there with but that's just a bit of pareidolia I think we might have a couple of stripes there it's hard to tell um, but this is the top of the spine going through here onto the tail extending out straight out from the back so that's not the face that's not an ear that's not an ear that's just bits of grass or 
um, that crop in the background which looks to be a leaf crop something like silverbeet or spinach or something um, but anyway there's the um, tail continuing up there's the rump goes right across there and you can just see the fawn color in there in that space so very interesting um, whether or not um, Candy or Candice can get any more photos or info um, maybe some scat or some print cars she did say she's been finding a lot of prints around the place and she just thought it was dogs but there you go she's um, got something hanging around I don't think that's a very big animal she said it's bigger than the fox but not as big as her um, pit bull so it's hard to judge exactly what that means pit bulls are a medium sized dog they're reasonably tall um, so yeah somewhere in that intermediate range probably as big as a small kelpie um, but that was yesterday that sighting that's hot off the press that one um, and a um, bit exciting I suppose it's been a big week in Thyla world I had um, some other photos sent to me as well from Western Australia from a member over there and we'll be doing a post about that as well um, so some exciting stuff spoken to a hunter as well in Tasmania that's chasing big cats in Tassie and he claims to have seen a cougar type animal as well as something which he described as a black leopard he could see spots but it was black so um, some interesting stuff going on out there and um, won't be long and I'll be back out there putting all the cameras out and um, getting set up again and going bush 